Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to The Brony Show. I am your host, as always, here, Circuit Main, here to bring you the fun and silliness of the Brony community for this week. Of course, as you can tell, it is episode 361, and Spike finally has achieved the dream. He finally got rid of the freaking um, rarity that's been around his neck and actually got himself a viable girlfriend for once. That's right. Sparity is dead. Long live, um, Spabby. What? <laughs> Honestly, or I'm Gabi? fine with this. Gabi? Because, <laughs> because when have we seen a lot of international shipping, uh, sorry, interspecies shipping outside of, like, you know, Spike and Rarity before Season 8? Um, we saw Rarity in the Rock. Tom does not count. Tom counts. <laughs> but yes of course uh, we are going to be talking about the latest episode uh, if it isn't obvious uh, this, uh, let's face it this top this, the, right here this is pretty much a, a semi-major spoiler but at the same time we all know the drill by the time the show comes on a spoiler spoilers for the latest episode are out the window unless it's a movie yeah, I, yeah or a I special I saw like an image of this and I just went Huh. Anyway, no, uh, well, we, we got That gotta... seems to be from a new episode I haven't seen yet. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. In any case, uh, let's go. Let, we still got quite a bit to talk about, and we're running, unfortunately, a little bit late because of uh, Jack in the Box shenanigans. So let's go ahead and start off with introductions. Of course, we have our wonderful panel of um, panelists. We have Deathlight Productions. Hey. Textalion. Hey. Uh, we got right. Toa Koi. Yo. And Suki of the Otaku Ascended. Did you hear that, Cole? He said it's your fault. And let's <laughs> see here. So far, the chat room has come up uh, with Gak or Gake or Gaki. Gaki? Gaki? Gake. Uh, Gake and Spike, but with the K and E from Spike and G A. Uh, that sounds like Gak. Oh my god, Gak. Gak! Gak. Yeah. Oh my god, Gak has come back! <laughs> 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 oh, okay, god. so we got Gak Steg. No, that's Spibby. the Steven Universe. Actually, I like Spibby. <laughs> Spibby is good. Uh, Spibby is very good. Long A. Long A sound. So. Skag. 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 Rake. 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 Gake. Gake. No, I like Gak. I, I like Gak better. He, he doesn't work. Okay, we can now have the Gak. We don't have Gak. No, we're gonna go with Gak. Gabby and Spike. Gak, it is. <laughs> that, that is our stance. If you want to have your own thing, comment down below. No, you know what? We're gonna end it right here. This is the best show we've ever had, and it all it took us five minutes. So we're ending early, everybody. We're ending on a high note. Good night. Okay. No, no, bye bye. <laughs> okay. So um. Uh, Unfortunately, um, temperatures are still going down. However, it's still a little hot in the boiler room that is a brony show. So, hopefully, nobody can hear the fan that's going on. No, but, you're good. All right. Anyway, where were we? Uh, yeah, I did introduce everybody, didn't he? We talking about Jack. I mean, Gake. Uh, Gake sounds like a Griffin name. Do, does that, that sound like a Griffin name? Gake. Uh, a little Gake bit. It also kind of sounds like a slur. Like a Griffin name. <laughs> it, it, it sounds real. It, it sounds a little slurry, but okay. Let, let's just let. Okay, Gak or Gake. Um, I'm still voting for Gak just because it would be awesome to have that. But let's go ahead. Uh, let's move on. Scene also is with you, Gak, all the way. Right. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and get started here. Of course, we do got quite a bit to talk about, but before we do so, we want to give everybody a chance to get on their soapboxes and preach away. So. We, also, we offer a little bit of time with a segment called What's Up, Brony? So, the question has to be asked. What's up, Bronies? Life well, happens. Okay, so absolutely nothing, I guess. So, all right. Well, I finally got a new daily driver. Just waiting for all the paperwork to come in. Ooh, <laughs> nice. Is that one that I shot pictures of in um, content creation? Hmm. Hmm. Alright, so, um, okay, uh, that's it. Uh, Alright, uh, well, not a lot going on. I, I'll, yeah, right now, right now we're basically at the cusp of September and everything is starting to go completely crazy. Seriously, yeah. I, 
I mean, I just got up today and it felt like everything steamrolled, which was kind of disappointing because during the weekend I actually had some fun over at the um, Fanex Comic Convention. I gotta make sure I say it like that because God help us, um, San Diego has their has their legal britches up in a knot. But so yeah. Salt Lake had their comic convention once again this year, and uh, I went went to a few panels. Nothing really pony related. I did see a few pony cosplayers. I didn't get a chance to get some photos. However, I guess I might as well talk a little bit about what I did. So we're I'm gonna go ahead and start off a little bit with a bit of a, a kind of a silly idea and story. So there there's a bit of a story to this. So everybody take a, take a bit of a seat, gather around old Uncle Circuit here, and ignore the questionable material behind this closet door. That's not for children. So his chain too. Keep keep his five feet away. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. So um yeah. So, um last year at when I went to BabsCon for the first time, I had a funny and silly idea that I wanted to try to do something a little unique in the way of cosplay. Now when a lot of cosplayers are already cosplaying as different characters from the show or as their OCs in some regards. So, you know, you would see, like, a few different Toilet Sparkles, a few different Spikes. You would see a Looney Turtle here and there, and you would also, you know, you get your random cosplayers. Now, I didn't see a lot of uh, cosplays that were based around a funny idea. Um, in case of, uh, so, what was happening is, and this is kind of synonymous with, um, what, with, uh, what uh, we were doing uh, with Jack in the Box, um, I was watching Cheers during that time as well. I was um, watching it again because I actually kind of enjoyed the show. And, of course, Cheers uh, got to the episode where Norm is dressed up in a toga. Let me see here. Well, you didn't do uh, Animal House going toga, toga. Okay, here we go. I had to say Cheers, not cheer. Da, da, da. Okay, so here's a quick image here, so the people know. So yeah, Norm, the Norm, the um, resident barfly, wore a toga, as you can see right here. Now, uh, going through the episode and then go looking around a bit, I ha realized that there was a good chunk of pony fabric there, but I have no idea how to sew, and it dawned on me, why don't I try this? Actually, set up a pony toga. So I bought about four yards of three different fabrics and I tried to wear it at BabsCon. Now I followed the initial instructions for a simple bedsheet toga because, you know, I, again, no sewing skills. Just wrap the, wrap the cloth around a certain way and tie it. That's what I was hoping to do. It did not work out. Now, the, now, um... Unfortunately, because that didn't work out, I tried to get it to work with a bunch of safety pins and some clever placement with some of the cloth, but it did not, it still did not work out. It kept slipping. I ended up dropping the cosplay about one to two hours into BabsCon, and it faded into obscurity until okay. recently. Hold on, hold on, we're not done yet. Story is far from done. So... Um, it faded into obscurity until more recently. Now, it's uh, for some reason, it came into my mind, let's try the toga again. And I started to hunt around for cloth because I figured my problem was I didn't have enough yards of cloth. So I go looking around. Walmart doesn't have any aside from uh, one-yard chunks that they're pretty much used for quilting. And I went to Joanne's where I found a, a boatload of... This is actually the most excited I got. I found fleece. Pony comic fleece. Which, it's hard enough to find pony comic cloth, but pony comic fleece was a good, was pretty cool. And uh, after some mental negotiation with myself, wondering, is this even a smart idea to try to make a toga with a bunch of fleece in the middle of summer? I just, I, grap I grappled enough to buy about eight yards of it contacted a friend who helped me sew it together and I tried to make a toga out of it and it failed miserably. 
I couldn't tie it very well, and when I actually tried to wear it for a few hours to see how it would hold up, I basically was sweating buckets, had to drop it, and gulp a ton of water so I didn't pass out. Needless to say, it wasn't a success. However, uh, in, however in, while I was talking with that said friend, I actually found out what I did wrong. When I initially did the bedsheet toga, I tried folding it because it was as a bedsheet. It didn't need to be folded because the whole idea of the folding was to just make it so it was not as wide. It was just uh, so you had so much length but not as much width. And I didn't have the width because I the cloth doesn't come in the size of a bed sheet. It comes in like half a sheet essentially. So I tried my luck and I managed to actually tie a tight but decent toga. So I took that toga. I took that toga, I grabbed a mask I got for Halloween last year. A rubbery horse mask that I got last year. I put this all together and I came up with Brony Cleese. <laughs> it only took three cons and five other people. <laughs> technically, technically it took two cons, a little bit of a dirt moment, and a Halloween mask which unfortunately got chewed up by the cat the night before and didn't get noticed till later. So unfortunately, the mask was also a cheap 7-Eleven rubber that I bought for about $5. So the mask is now the garbage because it got chewed up and it was already starting to split up. Plus it was impossible to breathe. The fabric, you can see it makes a semi toga. However, it's also ridiculously tight. So I still need another yard of fabric, which in order to make it work, however, the concept was there. The concept was there and it semi worked. And I just realized my I, I nobody in the restream in the restream chats of Twitch and YouTube are being seen. I apologize. Mm -hmm. I just realized that that is not updating the way it's supposed to because I have the wrong URL in there. So I am quickly correcting that. Now everybody can see your messages. I apologize. So go ahead and start twi um, twitching it up, Twitch chatters. Yeah. Why? Uh, now, now the reason. Now the question does become: Why did I do this? The thing is, why I, not is the answer. <laughs> well, why not is a great, a great answer actually. However, I do actually have a reason with my san with my insanity on this one. I want to try to shake things up and do things a little bit to get the Brony community to think of alternate and fun ways of doing cosplays as well as bringing different ideas to the front. In fact, uh, I actually had a, a recent idea in regards to old Wilkins coffee commercials that I'm right now talking with several people on. Literally several. I just had the idea earlier today. We're going to see uh, what we can do in regards to it. Worst case, we may end up with a small comic series that I'll post for giggles if I can ever get my art skills up enough. Best case, we actually might end up having sh little shorts that we're going to make with puppets. That's going to be hilarious. Yeah, but, puppets are always fun. But the thing is, with the Brony the thing is, the show is ending soon. We all know this. The Brony community will survive based on what, the cre what people come up with for content creation. And the best way to come up with content creation is to just try something different. Do something unusual and strange. Think of weird things. Shake up the norms and try it and just to live a little. Be creative. So be creative. Exactly. So that's why Brony Cleese is there. That is also why I am going to try once again to work on getting myself slimmed down. Maybe get a few muscles so I can take off that pinky shirt and show you a nice muscled body and an actual pony toga with a giant rubber horse head once again because I'm not giving up on this idea just yet. Also, here's another thing. If you look at Conchad, I was able to find someone that posted a full image of my Hollow Knight. Stuff like that, the only real thing I worked on for that cosplay was the head. Otherwise, that's just a lot of fabric and me wearing black. And what does this have to do with bronies? Well, for you could easily just do like a a outfit like the Equestria Girls, but jazz it up a little bit. Have a cape, a being like I'm Rainbow Dash cosplaying as a superhero. You know, something like that. Go crazy. 
You know what? I'll give you a, I'll give you a little bit of credit on a stretch, but that's all I'm going to give you on that one. Eh. But you know what I mean. That yeah. I, no, no, that I, image actually looks like someone that knows what they're doing. I don't. I have no argument to that. Anyway, so I went to so I went to Fanex. I did get some po uh, get a few print, pony prints because that is what I want to do. And also, Goodwill apparently had their own booth there. Go figure. But I got a ton of pony figures. I got the entire set of the giant um, pony, uh, the giant uh, pony figure power pony. So I got all of that now. I'm happy about that. I even found a, D a, a DVD of Season 5. So now I'm caught up to Season 5 and all the MLP DVDs. So, yeah, it was a pretty good, co it was a pretty good convention all around. And I actually got to try something. So anyway... That's it. That's enough of my soapbox, Aaron. I took up plenty of time. Um, anybody else want to jump in on any one last thing, or should we go ahead and get to the news? News. Yeah, I agree. So let's go, let's get right into the yo uh, net of the news. Unfortunately, things have happened again. So we thought we were somewhat in the clear when it came to spoilers for the season finale. Uh, stations were holding back on the episodes. It looks like we weren't going to see an English version of the fine of the finales until they were going to be published. Unfortunately, that's not quite the case. So, somebody hacked Hasbro. So, before people raise up in arms, this is not Hasbro's fault. People hack systems all the time. They suck. And I'm sure Hasbro did what they could under normal situations, but it just happens, unfortunately. There was actually a, I mean, there was a case with, um, the interview that actually ended up being pretty messy there. But in any case, so all of the episodes that had not been released in English got released unofficially in English. So right now, spoilers are out there. They are out there. And in fact, they are so out there, there's been YouTube thumbnails of the videos being posted. I actually oh. stumbled across some of these thumbnails and I immediately hit them. However, I admit they did they did show little snippets and hopefully I didn't see them quite right because I clicked I quickly clicked away as quickly as I could. So whether I actually saw them right or not, I don't know. But I have no idea what I'm still trying my best to keep as spoiler free as possible. However, this is a cautionary warning to everybody out there. Spoilers are unfortunately out there. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit difficult to avoid. You still have a month to go if you're watching the official releases, so just bear with and try your best. And it sucks. You had something to add, Toa? All I can say is is be careful out there, and whatever you do, don't click on anything you say. Is that canon? What? Exactly. Um, Anyway, okay, um, we're gonna go ahead and move on here, because I'm... <laughs> I thought you were gonna go into, like, a business thing, like, remember, if you don't see... If you see emails you don't recognize, delete them. Do not look at them. <laughs> go on. Oh, but, oh, no, I, no, no, I'm, I'm about ready to lose my mind on that. Oh, dear world, my work's been, we my work's been horrible lately. We but get that I, all the time at my work, so... Anyway, we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna leave that alone for now. That That's outside of here, and that's more for cop. That's more co coffee after party talk. Let's go ahead and talk about cool things like the Fiendship is Magic comic covers. Yes. Uh, yes, this one's actually pretty awesome. A new Fiendship uh, is Magic uh, comic cover of Twilight Sparkle and the and the um uh, um da Day of the Dead. Uh, Day of uh, Stella Muerte. Muerte. Yeah, yeah, Day, Day of Stella Muerte. Muerte. I thought it was Muerte. Oh, whatever. Uh, anyway. Whatever. Anyway, the comic cover is actually incredibly rare. And uh, comic cover artist Sarah Richard apparently had a few of them that were stashed away, and she's been putting them up on auction here and there. Lately, a smart. new one. It's very smart. And it's also pretty nice of her that she doesn't just dump them all at once. But it also means that they are out there now. And the latest one, another one, has popped up on eBay. Now, as of the writing of this article, it was currently at auction for $11.49. So, how about we go ahead and bring up that eBay auction right now and see what it's going for. 
if it's open, one no, it's not billion dollars. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not quite that extravagant in either regard. <laughs> but right now, the current the current bid is at one hundred seventeen dollars and fifty cents. It's hmm, still pretty impressive. Oh, it's still very impressive, and it still has over five days left to go. Mm -hmm. So everyone, go bid. <laughs> go ahead and bid. But no, if you don't actually have the money, don't actually bid on it because um, you're just jacking don't up the price for others. Money. You're either jacking yeah. up the price for others, which sucks, or you're going to end up actually accidentally winning the auction, which means you're going to have to pay that money, whether you like it or not, and that's going to suck more. Don't strain your finances. Mm. Too late. No, strain your finances. <laughs> if you want that comic cover, make sure you do whatever it takes. It's signed. Win at all costs. It's actually signed by Sarah Richard as well. So it's all your brothers and sisters if you have to. <laughs> no, not that. Anything but that. Yeah, I, I don't think you'll. I think you'll only get five dollars for them. I don't know. I was only the, able to get fifty cents. No, no. Just do what the smart kids are doing nowadays. Sell your school on a uh, Craigslist. I do I've, not been, I've seen that, that before. It might have been on mm. Freak News or something. That got dark. How did that get dark? <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and... Okay, uh, so we're going to go into get to dark here. Here's a little bit of merchandise news, or the little, the little merchandise news we do have. Dressed to impress pony figures that we actually talked about um, over at the uh, toy fair maybe a year or two ago from Kid Robot. We had these interesting pictures of um, a very hipster-looking Rainbow Dash. Unfortunately, it looks like Kid Robot decided to cancel this line of figures. Ah. So oh well. yeah, they know they are no longer exist, which I guess proves that not everything that we see pony-related is ever going to come out. Well, sadly. Here's the thing. Eventually, the prototypes will work their way into the mainstream. As you do. No, not gonna happen. I'm pretty. Some companies are actually really good about their prototypes, and they're probably already destroyed. Mm. Or on somebody's somebody's collector's desk because they like to hold on to prototypes. Mm. It would have been interesting to have these. I'm not gonna lie, but at the same time, I get horrible um, blind bag um, impressions out of it, and I just don't want to deal with another blind bag thing too. So, mm. Mm. is Fair. it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I don't know. Yeah, at the moment, the it's thing. just a thing. It would have been interesting, though, admittedly. So, that's it for um, sad news. Let's go on to interesting news. Starlight Glimmer and Spike have now shown up in the McDonald's lineup for toys over in Europe. So, this actually hey. brings it to ma the main six, Starlight Glimmer and Spike. So, the whole gang is actually here, all together for once. What about Trixie? What uh, about her? I have, to you, <laughs> I have to remind you that the last round of McDonald's, this was the same lineup. No, it wasn't. Take a look. Yes, it was. I have the image to prove it. Okay, put it up. All right. Going down here. Yep. No, I will also. A lot of stuff. Though I will also remind you that the last one from McDonald's was an advertisement for the um for the um for the Cutie Mark crew and not just the to pony toys. The Starlight have a crown. No, that's just her hair. However, what whether these are actually going to show up in America as uh, purchasable toys, we don't know yet. Right now, these are just in Europe. But, I haven't seen anything yet, but I'll keep you up to date. But, yeah, and we also, yeah, AG actually has her hat, which is also another miracle in itself. So there's a lot of miracles here. Lots of miracles. But, yeah, whether we get the toys or not, I guess we'll find out. Let's go ahead and move on to other things that you can buy. Meet uh, the, meet the bronies. Psychological, the psychology of the adult My Little Pony, Pony fandom. A book has been released. An actual physical book that you can buy. Dealing with lots of research and surveys over the last several years about the Brony community. And what they have found so far in regards to it. Ooh, a psychological understanding of our madness. Yeah, I saw these guys at <laughs> they're cool. 
Yeah, but yeah, meet the brownies, and you can buy it for forty dollars if you really want. I don't have an audio book. I don't know. I don't see anything about an audio book. I just see the uh, McFarland physical book. Whether there's anything else outside of that is unknown. Unknown. And a content creation. I yeah, I saw it. I saw it. But as I, I'm not taking it back because those were Key Mark Crew and promotionals. Still same idea. <sighs> and AJ has the hat. Okay. Okay. You know what? Toa was right. Hooray, he was right. And now in order to support him, we're going to mute him tonight. And he's muted. Click. Okay, we'll unmute him in a moment. But fine, Toa was right. I hope he's happy. Let's go ahead and uh, talk a little bit more about uh, the things going on here. Toys That Made Us Season 3 is going to be released on November 15th, and it looks like My Little Pony will be one of those toys. Now, this that is pretty... a really good series. Yeah, it, it's. I heard it really good things, but I've also uh, heard from a few collectors forums that it's also a little bit detrimental because the moment the, they, tar they actually talk about some of these collectibles and these toys... Apparently, just, just drive it out of the market. It sucks. The, yeah, the mar the market goes completely haywire for a while. Yeah, but overall, oh. I, I, it's really cool hearing about the history and stuff. Is this series on Netflix? It is on Netflix. Yeah. However, I'll be I, looking for this episode. In all honesty, though, I think we might be okay because it does talk about the history of My Little Pony, so it's probably the Generation 1 toys that are really going to go completely nuts. We're probably going to be okay with our G4s. However, I would also advise if there are any specific toys that you've been trying to get a hold of, you might want to put in a bigger effort and before November 15th. Yeah. Uh, I'm already dreading trying to get all those little mini Funko figures. <laughs> Gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. Catch so, you, Pokemon! So let's go ahead and get into gaming. There's quite a bit to talk about in gaming here. First off... Pen and Paper RPG Courage's Magic has returned. They, of course, they of course uh, made um, a uh, book RPG way back when, uh, called, called Courage's Magic. Of course, uh, this was uh, developed um, on their own time. Uh, I'm not sure if it, what they put it under. It's obviously not. It's not like a tie-in like Pony Finder is or. Um, not published either, like Roan. This is actually, it is based heavily in My Little Pony. So much that a lot of the pictures and everything that they use are artist pictures and different renderings and stuff. But it is an RPG that you can um, play essentially for free if you really wanted. Even the PDF is completely free to download so, yeah, there, unfortunately, I wish I could talk more about it, but I honestly can't. I didn't have a chance to really look over this too much. I don't know what kind of um, ruling format they have, but it does look it's, like it's really well fleshed out. And this is their second edition, so you can tell, you can obviously tell that they're going to be ironing out a lot of the wrinkles from the first edition. And uh, uh, I, I remember actually playing an early edition of this fish. A while ago it was fun but we kind of had just a little bit of group issues where i was doing stuff with people oh wow they even have different elements like the element of courage i'm not calling spike the element of courage but no yeah element of courage, element of, element, of, courage. element of empathy element of nightmares really they have hers in the element of nightmares element of curiosity Okay, so yeah, they got they got more than just the six elements here, and uh, and uh, they also got spirit, spirit of passion, element of air. Okay, there was only one spirit. What the hell? Okay, yeah, they got a hell of a lot of elements here. There's a lot to take in, and uh, wow, I really do, would have to read into this because there's a lot to take in. Dear God, it definitely looks a lot more flushed out than the Fallout Equestria system. Well, Fallout Equest depends on which one you go to because I have like two different Fallout Equestria books that are heavy enough that I could probably, I could probably put them on somebody's chest in order to try them for witchcraft. If somebody gets that reference, I will give them credit. I will give them so much credit if nobody, if somebody gets the reference. I get it. 
Yeah. Okay, I'm name it. I'm talking about the gaming system for Fallout. Yay, Fallout. Crystal yeah. Ball! Yeah, is that, it's like, the gaming system, the original one, is like only about 20 pages long. Fair enough. And it is so flimsy, and it confused you to all nothing, so... Yeah, that's um, that's definitely game. not the one I got. Uh, the ones I have are like their books are huge, but they're actually published books that are yeah you, know, you can buy over the conventions or online. Oh, you can play as a goat. Anyway, so yeah, if you are curious, there is a link in our um, show notes. I would recommend checking it out and downloading it and see about making your own campaign. We may try to do one of our own in the future here, though this is going to take a little bit of time to read and study up on before we actually do it, unless somebody else wants to take the reins. But we'll go ahead and uh, move on here. So, yeah. Courage is magic. Along with that, a new pony game is currently being worked on called Dimensional Shift. Of course, uh, this is really exciting because it's always exciting to see games uh, that are act that are actually inspired from other games and also have pony tie-ins and can actually be credible games that can be bought from different um, gaming resources like Steam or Itch.io or Game Jolt. How now? Uh, it looks like uh, at the moment they are hiring. They are looking for people to help develop a basically an indie game in this regard. They're not going for AAA status, but they are actually paying people to work for them. And they are looking for uh, many positions, biggest one being um, Unreal, um, the Unreal Engine 4 programmers. So if you, know, if you have um, experience in Unreal Engine 4 or in game design or making or anything in general in regards to video games, or you know somebody that does, let them know about this, especially if they are interested in Pony, because I do want to see this get off the ground and actually become a real thing. But all I can do is spread the word. So, here's the word. I'm going to spread it. So, let's go ahead and move on next little bit here. Now, um, we're going to talk about Rainbow Road Trip. Or, to be specific, and I'm surprised CMC isn't here to jump in on this. We're going to talk about the Rainbow Road Trip mobile game. My Little Pony recently updated to the Rainbow Road Trip, which uh, I am currently in the middle of, as well as uh, CMC is. Essentially, you're playing through all of the events that happened in the Rainbow Road Trip. You know, I thought for sure that I was dangling enough carrots for that, but... Okay, yeah, wow. Yeah, even the promo video is just a bunch of images from Rainbow Road Trip, and yeah. So the whole the whole idea is it pretty much exactly as you would expect. You can um, get a bunch of different ponies based on Rainbow Road Trip. You play through a storyline. Um, you do a bunch of um, things. You try to commu participate in community events. And you get a bunch of awesome little figures if you really wanted to get them. Such as, um, and this is actually the one I really want to get, Rainbow Trout. The Rainbow Trout Dressed a Pony. I, I'm actually really excited to try to get that. And the Earth CMC. CMC? You might have Check muted him. The tasks are very annoying in the fact that there are two that require the fuffle, but they also require other things. Okay, yeah, there you go. That's the biggest annoyance. That you, It's not just a pay a hundred gems and you're able to do the things it's yeah 500 gems for the, for the pony to do the thing it's yeah you have to pay a thousand gems for two characters to be able to do the various things it's rude ouch but yeah if you are interested though in trying to run through it it's here and it's open available for all so, let's go ahead and move on to games that, well, to a game you don't have to spend money on. My Little Pony Super Ethical Shipping Climax. I'm sorry, what? That's a, like a mouthful. <laughs> hey, this was a visual novel that was being st that was started way back in 2013 and finally has uh, gotten to its final version. Six years of development, currently sitting at about 15,000 words, 32 menus, 220 images, 24 screens and 87 different endings. It is basically your 
out and out um, pony dating simulator. Of course, that's a lot of endings. That's a it's, lot of pony. It's a lot of everything. And yes, you can play it right now and completely free. In fact, I downloaded it. It's over at Game Jolt. But yeah, they have released it in its entirety so for you to enjoy. And it is a pony dating simulator. It is PG-13. Because the humor has a few not safe for work bits, but you don't actually see any explicit scenes or anything. So, yeah, it's it, you could pretty much you could probably play it on stream without a problem. What's this? Yeah, what do you want? Well, there's <laughs> there's more adult ones if we really really wanted a pony dating simulator. But yeah, my little pony super ethical shipping climax. So be sure to check it out. Cool. And for those of you who like music. We have two different things of music. Pony and Brony Feelings album has been released by Ditherer, who does hip hop. I actually bought the album. I listened to a few tracks, and it is really good hip hop. It's nice. It's flowy. the The hip hop is is um, downbeat and not whack. Oh God, I feel old just saying that. Put, talk, put using the phrasing that the younger kids don't understand, my man. <laughs> don't use that phrasing. It's good. It's good stuff. It's enjoyable. <laughs> and it's a pay-what-you-want album. So pay what you want and enjoy some pony, uh, some brony-themed uh, hip-hop. However, if you want to not pay anything, um, Likonan. Now, some of you may not know who this is. However, uh, way, 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 way back when... Back in the early parts of the fandom, there was a person who took a lot of the music tracks that were out there and remade, revamped them. And then he disappeared about 2013. He recently came back making a six-part video series where he is actually do, replaying, he re remixed these tracks. All of them are remixes of old uh, Pony songs, um, like... Um, not a like a revamped, not a clever pony, uh, wooden toaster and storm wolf, um, living tombs. Oh, lo oh, here we go. Fruits of her labor for the new, new lunar republic. Love me cheerily, Barry way. Um, for the okay for the new, new uh, apparently two different types of new lunar republic, and a Kieran tale. Along with it, it actually he does have an entire story about how about his entry into the Brona community, what he's been up to, and what the community does mean to him, which is kind of it's kind of nice to read actually. So you can enjoy some wonderful music, listen to his words, and if you just want the music, he also has a band camp with the music, completely free to download. So, yeah, check it out, especially if you enjoy these old-school um, songs and you want to hear a remix of them. And finally, this was actually suggested in our lounge chat, but I'm going to go ahead and shout it out here on the show itself. There is a current project called Alien Twilight Series. And near as I can tell, I believe it deals with the, um, the idea of the Alien franchise... And it puts ponies into it. So, God help us. And this is actually a brand new story that just recently started to come out. And I wanted to promote this because somebody decided to, you know, you know what, we this looks interesting. I think we should check it out. And uh, I agree with him. It does look interesting and I would want, and I do want to encourage the artist who's making this to keep going. So if you guys are intrigued or interested by this at all, please go and uh, check it out. Leave a comment for the uh, creator. Let them know you are interested. You want to see more. And, you know, subscribe to the feed. Take a look. Uh, keep an eye on it. Because this could be the next comic series that people talk about a year from now, for all we know. Or even maybe a few months from now. You could be in on the ground floor, man. Ground floor! You could be. You be at ground zero when it all came loose. And You'll become the hipster. <laughs> You'll be the hipster. You'll be the hipster that said I was there when it was it when it was just coming out. I was there before oh. it was cool. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I do like the idea. It is interesting though. God help us if, I, if Twilight Sparkle has a chest burster come out of her. That's not the fun. 
No, I'm gonna bet that's Big Mac. He's gonna help for a while, get infected, and then have something come out of his chest. As long as it doesn't start singing, Hello, my baby. Hello, my baby. Hey, hello, hello, my honey. honey. Hello, hello, my ragtime girl. girl. Okay. Uh, not again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, there we go. All right. So let's yeah, go. I still, find, yeah, I still find it funny with uh, just a quick story. That, that movie, because I saw that movie, I actually saw that movie before I saw Alien. So after I saw Alien and then saw, like, because I think I saw Spaceballs when I was like 10. Yes, I was allowed to see Spaceballs when I was 10. Fuck all y'all. <laughs> and... Go comb the desert. And then, uh... Then, th I think I saw Alien, like, five years later, and then when I rewatched Spaceballs, like, probably a year after that, that's when I finally went, Oh! Now that makes way more sense. I think I might have saw the Ali Alien as a kid, but I didn't connect the dots until much later in life. But, in any case, let's go ahead and get into the content that I'm sure you've all been waiting for. I know I have, because I actually fulfilled my promise this time. The Challenge of the Week. The Challenge of the Week. The Challenge... Okay, I'm just trying to see if I can summon Cold Dust with that. But, of course, the Challenge of the Week was Pony as a comic character. And there was a protest initiative challenge. Well, since we don't got coal dust, we got the next best thing. CMC, do you want to jump in on it? Or do you I've been remembering what it was. Um, uh, there's always show notes. Uh, I'll just go with what I put in the header last week. Crazy faces. Crazy Can I be head things. again? No. Nah. No, don't worry. Don't don't mess up cold dust too much. I meant I I meant. Wait. Oh, you were doing a, a Beetlejuice thing. I get it. You're welcome. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. I oh I get it. I get it. I got there. I got there. Also, a second. I got the Crucible joke. All right. So let's see here. Yeah, I know you got the Crucible joke. <laughs> It's a very long bug, and I would have added him, so, yeah. Alright, so, yeah, pony, crazy faces. Um, so, we got uh, two different art entries. Only one of them is going to count, though, because one of them is mine. <laughs> and we did get a write-in from Ponyman64, who actually wrote a big story entry shortly after we made the... we initialized the challenge. So... I will now regale you all with Ponyman64 and his story. <coughs> One night, Thomas Ray was walking home with his wife and son when suddenly a figure stepped out from the shadows. This is a stick-up, buddy. Hand over your cash, said the assailant. Thomas slowly levitated his wallet over to the mugger. And I'll have that necklace you're wearing, lady. He reached out and Thomas moved to stop him. There was a flash and bang from a gun. And Thomas fell dead. Thomas's wife, Martha, began to scream, calling for the police. This'll shut you up. The gun was fired again and Martha also fell. The criminal fled into the night, leaving the cult, Bruce Rain, alone. D dead. They're dead. He said in shock. Days later, Bruce lit a single candle in a dark room. And kneeling over his bed, he made a solemn vow. I swear on the spirits of my parents to avenge their deaths by spreading the rest of my life warring against all criminals. Bruce began to float in the air as magic began to swirl around the room. With a flash of light, the image of the burning candle was now adorned on his flanks as Bruce Rain received his cutie mark. Over the next few years, Bruce will study science, criminology, engineering, detecting, and the multiple languages. He trained in martial arts and honed his body to peak physical perfection. When he was ready to finally begin his crusade, Bruce realized he needed something more than to give him an edge. He knew criminals are superstitious, cowardly lot. 
and what he needed was a persona to strike terror in their hearts. What should it be? He wondered. As soon as he asked, a vampire fruit bat flew in the window. An omen, Bruce said. I shall become a bat. And with that, Bruce Rain became Batman. Elsewhere in Equestria, Jack Naper, a career criminal, one who many had, had been held. <clears throat> One who many have been responsible. Oh, I see. Um, mm. Third time's a charm. One who may have been he responsible for the murder of the reigns found himself face to face against a pony dressed as a bat who intended to bring him to justice. In the struggle, Jack fell into a vat of chemicals and was presumed dead. But Jack would later emerge, his coat bleached white, his mane stained green, his lips ruby red, and stretched to an impossibly wide grin, his wi eyes wide and googly. And that was the story from Pony Man 64. Let's see. Along with that, we do have a few different art entries. Did, did every did I just is everybody alive? Did, did I uh, did I kill yeah, well, we're still here. What? No, well, I don't know. Oh. No, I just no, I just let you I just let you bury yourself there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Alright, along with that you we also to... have, we also have Toakoi, who is dressed as our man. Our man. No, I'll take your word for it. If you want to try to save your voice when doing that rasp, it's much easier to do it in the back of your throat and lower your voice a bit. You know what? No, honestly, yeah. that did that did not over. do that did not do anything to my voice. I would just say if you try doing that for an hour, you're gonna feel it. So. Oh no! Yeah, <laughs> I, I'd imagine after an hour, I would definitely feel the whole. Episode. Yeah, I basically went. That. Okay, what's an obscure character that no one would know about that I could easily do? Oh, hey, Albert Man's a thing. Well, oh, there's an incarnation where he was a robot in the 90s. Why? I don't know. Everybody was either in power armor or something in the 90s. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, even yeah, that, that is... Sorry. Even Superman had power armor in the 90s. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. All right, so, yeah, that was um, that was the art entry from Pony Man. Uh, thank you very much, Pony Man, if you're there. And Toakoi's art entry here, which, um, yeah, it, I, I'm making my own face right now just from that. <laughs> Though it, it almost feels like you're kind of forcing the whole crazy th face thing just because you can. I don't know. Eh, happens. Any case, um, so those are the art entries. Now, while we go ahead and deliberate who wins, uh, here's the art entry I made. Of course, this is Twilight Sparkle. And she is dressed as a witch from my from Little Witch Academia, and yeah, I know that's not a comic. I I admit I kind of flubbed up a bit, and I was running out of ideas. Yeah, but, unfortunately, I can't save you with the idea of there's a manga. Yeah, I didn't think there was a manga either because this was actually a, a basically a creative animation project, which they managed to get off the ground. So, if anything, yeah. there might be a light novel based off of it, but there's definitely not a manga, at least not yet. Actually, now I have to check that, just to make sure I'm correct. Well, maybe I'll be you lucky. You could have totally flubbed it and said she's one of the witches from Soul Eater, and everybody would have believed you. <laughs> yep. I could have, but I'm gonna no. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep honest to what my in, my inspiration was, and it was my witch academia. Or well, witch academia. well, Circuit. Guess what? They did make a manga adaptation. Huzzah! Safe <laughs> by safe by random luck. <laughs> Technically, manga is a. I win. Let's see. Let's see. First volume in English came out in June of 2018. Hmm. Yay! Very recently. <laughs> wow. So I. Uh, well, a year ago, but still, that's pretty yeah. close. Very recently. So yeah, uh, but th this may be my may art. Remind you about the One Piece talk I did yesterday. And no, no. 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 Yeah. No. No. I mean, literally, no. We're going to go ahead and continue moving on here because we don't have time for that. No, we are instead going to go ahead and um, Toakoi made some interesting art. I did like the uh, interpretation of Batman as Batman. Though, admittedly, the candle cutie mark thing was a little weird. Am I the only one that thought that? 
Okay, so I, I, guess, I guess I was the only one that thought that thought of that, that thought that. I, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by that. I don't know. Just was that in the writing. Yeah, it was actually in the writing when he's when he's just like, okay. uh, "I will avenge my parents," and then suddenly his room flashed and the candle came, became, got put onto his flank. Well, also he could have had that cutie mark before. No, it, it literally says it in the description. That's how he got it. Weird. Man. Uh, the light of the nights. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyway. So, um, alright. Um, in all regards, though, I, I mean, yeah, you're trying to dress up as our man. It just sounds like, it looks like you've recolored your character and put on a cape. Uh, yeah, I didn't have enough time to draw all the detail, because that was literally done as the pre-show was wrapping up. All right, I give you an A for effort, but Ponyman64 wins this one. Oh, I understand that. All right, then. And the winner of the protest and issue challenge is Flash Sentry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they will not let me have it simply because, well... Well, if Flash I get kicked Sentry around, it's... craziest faces. You just haven't seen them yet. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> well, honestly, I can't believe that. Also, just with context on our man, shoop. All right, so next week's challenge, I'm going to go with Pony packing up summer. Summer is unfortunately ending. The beach balls must be put away. The shorts must be folded. Pants must be put on. And we must be ready to endure about three months worth of pumpkin spice. Yeah, uh, we got in pumpkin pies Friday. Case in point. Any uh, case, so with that, it's time for ponies to start packing up summer. What does that mean to you? I'm actually going to leave this open to your interpretation. Pony is starting to pack in summer. Are they just um, packing away all their shorts? Are they going to fold away in a nice summer umbrella? Are they literally chasing after the last ice cream van before it chase it before it vanishes in the distance, not to return again until next summer? Definitely that one. Yeah, actually, I kind of, I kind of like that one. You know what? We'll go with that. To have them chasing after an ice cream van as it's driving, as the final one drives away for the summer, I would love that. I, w I would love that so much. <laughs> but that there is our challenge for the week: ponies saying goodbye to summer or packing it up. And, uh, what we need now is a protest initiative challenge. I have a possible idea, but I want to see if I can't get Cole alive because I see he's alive over there. So I'm going to go poke him for a moment. Go ahead and poke. Ow! Poke and prod! <laughs> Honestly, I would immediately dump him over here in this call if I had any option to do so. I would uh, DM12. Yeah, that image from the episode... That is also a reference to something in the comics. Anyway, yeah, while we're getting ready for the last little bit, we are going to be talking about the episode next, so please get your pictures into the pics and gifts. Uh, the year 1972. Okay. 1972. Okay, here I am. Hi. The protest initiative challenge for this week is the year 1972. Okay. A lot happened that year. You just don't know it. Yeah, it was probably like a whole bunch of shit like i mean i'm sure some like styles happened probably an invention i don't know go find well, out yourself here's how uh, i can tell you yeah. i can tell you why um a lot of the muscle cars kind of got out of style in the 70s let's see yeah, 19, 1972 was a leap year that started on saturday on the gregorian calendar let's see uh, apparently, it was the longest le year ever because two se two leap seconds were added for that year, along with that. Uh, and, and yeah, Wikipedia literally has a bunch of events that happened oh. for that. Um, apparently, You're in 1972, good. they had they invented hacky sacks. In, on March 30th, 1972, they made hacky sacks. <laughs> you, you, you have brought doom upon us all. Uh, oh, uh, Pong. Pong was invented. Oh, uh, okay, now you brought good. <laughs> 16, 1972. So, there you go. I've already given you two things to play with. Uh, ooh, hang on. 
uh, pop things that happened in 1972. Okay. Uh, um, uh, 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 Kodak Pocket was made. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, ground beef cost 98 cents. If you want to have a pony complaining about the price of ground beef, despite the fact all ponies are in canon vegetarians. <laughs> Actually, uh, not even vegetarians are vegans, or at uh, least they're trying to—they're trying to encourage a vegan lifestyle to animals that are obviously carnivores. That's uh, right. I'm still pissed. Uh, in fairness, Wait. they do eat eggs. And Cole, you, 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 when you watch that episode, it'll make sense. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Damn it! It sucks to be like a couple of behind. I did see this week's episode though. I saw that one. Good, and because we're about to talk about it. Okay, cool. I need to go watch two other episodes. Oh, come on. Don't you want to talk about the episode first? I'm leaving Creature Marcy hanging. They already got a cute. Fair enough. Go ahead and have fun, then. Have and we fun will... with the happy couple. And we will go ahead and talk up... I believe you. Apparently there's a reason for the candle. Pony Man just posted it in the Twitch chat. Hmm. Oh. Okay, so I... Did I miss something? Okay. Pony Man, let's see. Let's see. Um, I think the googly eyes was a protest. So, oh, I see that. Oh, the googly eyes in the story was the uh, wacky face. My apologies. I should have figured that now that I think about it. All right. If you look at the original, uh, the original origin for Batman, there's a candle with when Bruce makes his vow. When Dick Grayson makes the same vow, there are two candles. The candle represents Bruce Wayne's devotion to his crusade. It predates him becoming Batman, so his cutie mark wouldn't be a bat, and it wouldn't have a have business keeping Mark at that age. You know, I'll 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 give him points for give him points for thought on that. That actually is pretty good um background. Yeah, that that's a lot. See, people, this is why you go into that and go. Well, why is that? Look it up. Oh, that's neat. Someone's a clever writer. Well, anyway. Just crazy attention to detail that I, I want to do with Pony. I did Gallo going into every single frame. But we're gonna have to. We can start doing that as soon as the episodes are over. Literally at the beginning, because we're gonna need an excuse. Uh, 